welcome back to another episode of Strip by Sia, your podcast for strippers, sex workers, and all the fancy naked people in between. I am your host, Steph Sia, aka Kimchi on stage. I might be curious to see where I'm dancing this weekend. Actually, no, at the time of recording, I will be dancing at Cheetah's this weekend in Kelowna. Hello. What up? But uh, by the time this is released, I will be long gone. <laughs> and it might be Christmas time. Um, so happy holidays. <laughs> and the sound might sound a little bit different today because I am actually recording my very first in-person interview in like almost two years. I am really excited to have someone in my house. I'm really stoked to bring on our guest who I'll introduce in just a quick second. I forgot to always do my full intro here. So some background. I am a digital content creator. I'm a stripper. If you were wondering, like, oh, your book somewhere. I'm a stripper in Vancouver, Canada, as well as um, a former sugar baby. That's my experience within the sex work community. And I have been doing this podcast for a little bit over yeah, two to two years and a bit. And we bring every uh, week a new episode with new guests talking about different facets of the sex industry in order to destigmatize sex work. So back to our guest today. I am very excited to bring my friend and wonderful human being, Marcel Canuck, on to the show today. Marcel is a life art model, and although that might be a far cry from sex work, you'll actually be surprised at how many similarities there are within the two, and I'm always like curious about blurring the lines here on the show too, especially within this season. And it's something that I'm curious about. And of of course you audience as well, you listeners were also curious about as well. So without further ado, I'd like to say hello and uh, give a warm welcome to Marcel. Marcel, hello. Hi Steph, how are you? (laughs) I am so good. It's so nice to have you like here in like physical form. I can see your face. (laughs) (laughs) Not online for once. Not online. You're like, let's just like, can I just come over and record? I'm like, yeah, let's let's do it. Because I'm like, do you want to record virtually? And you're like, no. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm really happy to have you on today. Um, thank you so much for sharing what is going to be uh, this entire hour, less than an hour, all about life art modeling. And I bet, I guess like, uh, if I wanted to share with the audience quickly how we met, which is through pole dancing. Shout out to Ava Studios in New West. We met through there and then... I think that's actually how you also got into pole dancing as well, is through life art modeling. I think it was like a session being hosted at Ava or something like that. But we'll get into your origin story, all your background. How did you, like, who are you? Like, what is your definition of who you are? I'm just going to throw it back at you. (laughs) (laughs) Well... I would say I'm a human being, you <laughs> first are and foremost. A wonderful human being. Absolutely. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> and yes, we met at uh, Ava Fitness. I, uh, you were actually my instructor, one of my instructors. Yes. The, uh, and and uh, it's been absolutely wonderful. It's been like 18 months of pole dancing, and and it's a fabulous sport. I can only, I can only recommend it yes. yeah, to everybody out there. Absolutely, and also FYI. Marcel is a male, and men can pole dance too. I will just say that. <laughs> so a lot of people are like, hey, like, are you sure people can do this? Yes, they can, and that's like a whole other topic they'll have for another day at some point. Yes. But yes, this is how we met, and then uh, I don't remember how I approached you about this topic, but I think, I think I knew that this was like how we got started pole dancing. I was like, oh well, we should talk about life art, life art modeling because that's such an interesting area, and also like. Again, as I mentioned, so many similarities and overlappage with sex work. So I don't know where you want to start here. Maybe we can kind of go into the definition of what life art modeling actually entails. Sure. Yeah. The, uh, I think that'd be great. Um, light life art modeling, in essence, uh, life drawing, drawing from life, drawing the human body is, is the essence of learning, uh, being creative, doing art. Mm-hmm. So anybody that goes into animation, uh, creating graphics, drawing, doing paintings, fine art, the, uh, the life drawing is used to, to learn because the human body is one of the most difficult things that, you, that one can draw. And, and uh, life models, and those are nude life models, are used for that purpose. Mm-hmm. At schools such as 
fine art schools, SFU, UBC, Capilano University, animation training programs, uh, art studios, lots, lots of different institutions where, where that's used and life models are required for that purpose. Yeah, I had actually zero idea. I just, <laughs> <laughs> I, I've heard of life modeling before and I was like, oh, well, that's just like drawing the human body. Like I just thought, I was like, oh, it's just a beautiful like way of art or something. But yeah, there's an actual like real purpose for it. Very and much so. Especially here in Vancouver, where we're from, like there's a huge like visual effects community here, lots of studios, animation studios. So yeah, like it's really cool that like it really does serve a purpose. Very, very much so, society. yes. Yeah, I mean, I'm really curious, and I'm sure the audience is also curious too, about how you got started. Like, how did you stumble upon being a life model? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's uh, uh, actually an interesting story. I, uh, we were just hanging out with friends, and, and uh, uh, one of her is study, was studying at Emily Carr, and she needed to do homework, homework, so she needed somebody to model for her. The, uh, and I grew up in Europe, so for me, being naked is very natural. I grew up in Europe as a nudist yes. uh, all my life, so... So she needed somebody to model for her naked. Of course, nobody wanted to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, so I said, I'll do it. And, and I, I really liked it. And I liked the drawings. I liked the spirit of it, if, if you can call it that. Yeah, of course. The, uh, uh, because you're creating. Uh, and the model, the, model, the pose uh, comes over to the artist. And the artist takes uh, its own interpretation and creates the art from it. And I think it's an absolutely wonderful process. And so... So I got a couple of drawings, so I put them on Facebook, and next thing I knew, people were contacting me, asking me to model for them. And what? so I started, you know, researching it online. I started training at home, right? Yeah. Posing in front of the mirror to see how, what pose I can hold for how long, uh, that type of thing. And, and then it kind of just went on from there. Yeah, and that's, a, that's really interesting too, because like you mentioned, you started doing your homework. So you started working on your poses, and stuff because that that's a huge thing because you're gonna have to hold these poses for how how long are you hold, holding these poses for? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It, it's it ranges everywhere from 15 seconds to hours. 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 And and uh, if you do like a three hour pose, you take breaks. Like every 45 minutes, you take a break. Okay. <laughs> the uh, uh, but you'd hold uh, individual poses for, for like 35 minutes, right? Up to or or 40 minutes. But you need to know which pose you can hold for how long. You can't right. do a handstand for forty-five minutes, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> or like or stand head. with your heads over your with your arms over your head, right? You know yeah. that's that's maximum five minutes. So it's it's very physically demanding, actually. Yeah, and I think a lot of people forget that the entire physicality that <laughs> comes with the work because it is work. It's um, very hard work. Very hard work, and I like can't imagine. Oh my god, you mentioned like hands up like <laughs> that's very very physical very heavy right so very I feel heavy. Like a lot of people forget about that aspect yes. of it um i want to also talk about maybe different other challenges that you've experienced as a model um obviously the physical aspects one of them what about like the conditions like where 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 do these sessions get held yes. and stuff like that yeah and typically like um for a school or institutions, they're held in a classroom. Mm -hmm. uh, for an art studio, they're they're held somewhere in a in a room at the art studio. It's usually some old warehouse. <laughs> <laughs> very the, uh, comfortable. Very comfortable. <laughs> usually, these rooms are very cold, and if you're modeling for three hours or six hours at a time, the uh, um, the room conditions are always for people that are dressed and they're sitting down. Yes. The uh, so when you're on stage as a model, you're naked. It, you're always cold. So it's not something for somebody who is who easily <laughs> <laughs> feels very cold. Yeah. Uh, and and yes, it's it's very demanding physically because you do it for hours in a row. The uh, and you have to know all the poses, right? Starting with like one minutes to thirty minutes, you're gonna do like 100 or 200 poses. So you need to know and they need to be expressive and different. Oh, so you wow. have to have a huge repertoire of different poses and they have to be expressive. Otherwise, the artists aren't inspired. Right. How would you like describe an expressive pose? Um, I, I would classify them perhaps such as classic poses, mm. like, you know, like a statue type pose, yeah. like a David from, by uh, Michelangelo, mm -hmm. or, or um, uh, dynamic poses, those are like action poses, like somebody throwing a ball or somebody, uh, uh, yeah, sports type pose, the, uh, um, as well as, as and, and you can really be very imaginative. I always think of something, like I don't just do a pose, I think of what I'm actually doing. Right. The, uh, say I'm throwing a spear or something like that, and I do that pose. 
the uh, and and when you do that, the artists pick up on it, mm -hmm. and and they they it finds its way into their drawings or their artwork, paintings, whatever they're doing. So it's a very uh, fascinating. It's yeah, it's like almost like still theater. Yeah, because right? you know? are you are kind of expected to tell a story or to say something or emote in some way, but that's so challenging when you're still and you're not saying anything. Like, how is that going to translate on paper? Exactly, and yeah. it's all in your pose. You know, it comes down to your hands, your fingers, your facial expression, the uh, the way your body is twisted and whatnot, so that the the what they call a line of action is mm -hmm. is visible to the to the artist, and they can figure out what what you're trying to communicate to them. Mm. So it, it is. Uh, it's very inspiring, but it's yeah. it's very hard work too. But really hard too, and you're talking about like hundreds or hundreds of poses and stuff. Is each pose in succession like is say like you're painting a picture like you're about to run somewhere? Um, would each movement count as a pose, or like how how does that work? Yeah, how, what's your process? Like the poses are of course you you're still. Yes. You, you're, you're, you can't move mm -hmm. the, uh, but you can do sequential poses so, right. so yes. as for example when you're running and I would do five poses in a row where I'm running and then I move on the next step and the next step mm -hmm. and that's, uh, that's something we use for animation type training so people that go into creating all type of animation type things right. the, uh, and, and they like that very much like you're throwing a ball and you show that in five different poses in a sequence mm -hmm. and, and they enjoy that very much helps them very much Absolutely. Really interesting. I mean, when we're talking about nude modeling, and this is where it gets kind of interesting, and it, I guess, like, invites a lot of different assumptions. When people are posing nude, are people assuming that this is an erotic thing? Because, like, for, as you're, and you're smiling now, <laughs> you're smiling now, but, like, again, like, what you're describing to me is really just, like, dynamic and just normal kind of poses to me. And I feel like there's maybe a misconception about, this is going to be erotica or this is sensual type of art. Is that completely different or? Um, well, as a model, the, uh, there, there is a creative energy that you create between the model and the artists that are in the room. And it's a very, it's almost a spiritual experience the, uh, uh, to do that. It's not erotic. The, uh, it's, it's artsy. It's, it's inspiring. Mm -hmm. and, and as a model, I know I get a lot of questions online because I put the pictures, I take pictures of the drawings when I model and I put them on my Instagram and I get a lot of questions and typically from men the, uh, because they think by modeling nude, exposing themselves, it's a way to meet dates. Oh the, my uh, gosh, the, uh, um, Not realizing that, you know, in a cold classroom for three hours. <laughs> So, so your best piece will be shriveled up to nothing. So, so, so it's, it's so if you're looking to looking to impress anybody with that, that's not going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> and and they think very much when they look at the drawings of me and online, uh, they think very much it's an erotic experience. It's not. It's a very painful experience actually because oh. any pose you do, you hold it for an for an extended period of time, right. it's painful. It's yeah. very painful, and and uh, yeah, any thought of, of it being erotic goes away with the pain. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> and and it's not about that at all, right? It is about creating art, and mm -hmm. and even you know when you're doing, I do a lot of duet modeling with friends, my, uh, model friends, and the uh, and and when you do a, a a couple's pose or something like that as a model. It's like theater. You're an actor. Yeah. You're you're representing you're something. You're playing a role. You're yeah. holding it. You're breathing. You're you're not. There is no. There is not nothing erotic involved in the process. It, it, the result that the artist may draw may 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 suggest that, but as a model, it's very hard work. And so so mm -hmm. yeah, a lot of people have the wrong impression about totally. it. Right? Just like. For strippers as well yeah you know, when you're when you're working on the pole yes. <laughs> you're not thinking <laughs> erotic <laughs> thoughts you're thinking oh my god am i slipping yeah. oh my god can i hold this what oh my I, god I I <laughs> <laughs> right i'm in pain <laughs> yeah or i'm in pain or like oh my god i'm losing grip or like what errands do i need to do after this and i get gas like <laughs> yeah, <that's right. laughs> it's very mundane <laughs> that's what i do when i model i i think about like like right now i'm working on the pole routine for the upcoming Christmas show at yes. Ava Fitness. So in my head, I'm going through the routine. Mm -hmm. I'm visualizing the routine as I'm holding the pose. And the shorter poses, you have to count. You don't use a timer. You just yes. count. 
the uh, up to two minutes I, I count the longer I use the timer and so you're counting your head and you're thinking about your daily things and your routine and whatever whatever else like getting gas yeah. right? <laughs> I'm telling you, it's really mundane. Like, even when we're doing, like, lap dances and private dances, like, a question I get a lot is, like, oh, do you ever get, like, turned on? And I'm, like, I'm really not. <laughs> I'm just thinking about, like, is this guy going to, like, buy another dance? Or, like, what am I going to eat tomorrow? Like, what am I going to cook for lunch? <laughs> like, I need exactly. to end my podcast. Like, You're working. <laughs> I'm working. I'm working. And then same with you as well. Or, or even with um, your pole, pole moves and pole dancing. Holding these poses are like really painful sometimes, depending on the pose. But like holding anything, even if you're doing a pole shoot, like a photo shoot, it's just like, get the goddamn <laughs> shot, please. I can't hold it for any longer. <laughs> yes, and the bruises, the bruises are proof of that. My, if yeah. you saw my arm, it's it's literally purple on the inside right now. The, pole uh, kisses. The uh, pole kisses, yes. <laughs> so, so yes. <laughs> Well, steering it back to like common misconceptions too, like and even like the work that you do with with other models, like you mentioned like duets and stuff. I'm sure you get some common questions like, oh, like, like is that your girlfriend or is that your wife or something? Like, how can you pose with someone naked? Like, how do you navigate those kind of conversations? Yeah, it's it's. There's a lot of stigma. There's a lot of misconception. Mm -hmm. The uh, uh, my friend Anne and I, she's a anarchy. She's a, a local model, very good model. We we do a lot of duets together, and we're very very expressive together. And we got a lot of questions when we post it online. You know, are we a couple, whatnot? No, we're friends. Yeah. Yes, we're naked on stage together. The uh, and often we're right on top of each other doing a pose, but but we're working. This, this is entirely professional. Uh, mm -hmm. She's a wonderful person. I uh, I like her very much. The uh, and 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 working with her is fantastic. But it, people don't realize how much work it is. And and you know you're working. It's hard work. And yes. and so it's really difficult. Um, the 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 picture that that some people have about it. And and it's the same with the the, the usual assumption is is that I'm gay because I'm a pole dancer. Mm -hmm. I'm a I'm a figure model, the, uh, so I get a, I get a lot of approaches online, and I get a lot of you know dick pics and stuff like that. <laughs> oh the, yes, uh, the dick the, uh, pics. And it's like you know, uh, and and often I respond, you know, I get this picture of this close up of this giant thing. Oh my gosh! And no. And I respond this as well, and and I'm being sarcastic. I say, well, at least buy me dinner first. But they're not getting my drift. They're like, oh, I'll buy you dinner. I'm like, no, 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 it's not what I meant. <laughs> <laughs> and and people oh are not God. realizing that that um, like when you're when you're working in a group with with artists, there is a there is a connection that is that is established. And and I think nowadays, where sexuality, sensuality, expression, artistry, um, it all has been has gone from nothing, boom, right into porn, right? Oh, and there's yeah. nothing in between. Nothing. There's no allowance for people to connect, for people to work together. And even work together, like like when you're a stripper, you work with others, and and mm -hmm. in the same figure model. It, it, and and the, and what I really like in the arts community, the artists really understand that, mm -hmm. and so the artists the artists know they understand, and it, and it's a wonderful connection with them. It's wonderful working with them. Mm -hmm. The uh, and it's typically just the people online that have no idea, and and mainly men that think it's a way to modeling is a way to pick up women, where it's yeah, really not. It's really not. <laughs> yeah. Well, women, men, or whoever. Or, or whomever, yes. Yeah, which we'll get into the predatory aspect of it later on. But yeah, I mean, you draw you drew on so many great points there in terms of like the parallels that come with the work aspect of it. Because again, like drawing on with your colleague, like you are two working professionals and this is a job. And like, again, the same thing with, with sex work. People forget that it's work and it's not easy. There's that assumption that this work is easy. I'm sure you get that assumption as well, being a model, like, oh, modeling, I'm just, I'm just posing. I'm just standing there looking pretty or something. <laughs> right, exactly. It's, it's hard. It, it, it's hard work. And, you know, when, when auto models and I work together, the, uh, it's, it's like when we pole dance together, I'm doing a duet performance for the Christmas show with Gigi and, yes. and, you know, you the, the gender of the other person actually doesn't matter at all. Totally. Uh, their sexuality doesn't matter at all. Mm -hmm. it, what matters is that 
you're working with the other person, you're working very closely, and it's a question of respect, right? You treat, you know, we treat other people with respect. And I think that's first and foremost, the most important part of it. And then you get to know the person and you get to appreciate the person. You may be friends the, uh, and, and a lot of good things come out of it. And, and I've really enjoyed being a model aside from, you know, some of the side effects. Uh, mm. But overall, it's, 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 it's a wonderful experience. Yeah, absolutely. And you talk so passionately about that. I, I get to see it and hear it in your voice. And I'm sure everyone listening can also hear it in Marcel's voice. Really loves what he's doing. So thank you so, so much for sharing that. Like we are going to go into the side effects, the predatory aspects and the nature of, of modeling in just a little bit. So like later on the episode, but I also want to speak like um, the professionalism between the artists and the models. Is that always very professional, or do, has it, has anyone ever crossed the line, or no? And you're shaking. Your never. Head. This is so nice to hear. Never. I, I've never, I've never had. I've only had one bad experience with an administrator at a at a uh, at a studio in Toronto. Mm -hmm. uh, he wanted to film, and I said oh. no filming. Yeah. The, uh, and Definitely and no filming. Uh, the uh, he tried still have his cameraman film, and I said no. I got dressed, and I said that's it. The uh, um, but. That was the only experience I've ever had, and that was not the artists. The artists felt very bad. Yeah. The, uh, he was trying to make a promo video for his studio, and I told him in advance, no filming, no video. The, uh, and he still mm -hmm. tried to have his camera guy film me, and, and uh, that was the only experience, bad experience I ever had with art. With, with the in the, the artists themselves, I've never have modeled uh, in Vancouver, in Toronto, in Calgary, in LA, also in Europe, and, mm -hmm. and I've never had a bad experience ever. The artists understand why they're there, what they're doing there, the, uh, and, and they're very much focused on creative their art, picking up your creative energy of what you're trying to communicate with your pose, and, and, and I have to say, um, it's been wonderful. That's so good to hear, because I mean, I just, like, the last thing I want, especially like when I'm talking, when I'm referring to photography and I've talked about like predatory photographers in past episodes if you want to listen to Liquid Cherry Strip listen to Bianca from Behind Closed Doors um there's so many instances with that with photographers or like quote-unquote photographers that are not even real photographers <laughs> that are wanting to like quote-unquote build their portfolio and then take advantage of models and end up like assaulting them yes and I'm, I'm glad that nothing has happened in your experience I'm so glad to hear that um I really want to understand, like, when you're talking about receiving these, like, dick pics and, like, messages and stuff, who are these messages coming from? Is, is, is it, like, the public, the people that are messaging you, say, like, on your Instagram, or, like, are you in some groups, maybe, or who are these people? Um, yes. So, so first and foremost, I, I really appreciate what you said about uh, what we call a GWC, a guy with a camera, yeah, pretending to be a photographer, okay. because, because I've done... Um, fantasy art and other type of photography modeling as well but I'm very careful there mm -hmm. because a lot of my modeling friends they had uh, very bad experiences with you know so-called photographers yeah. the uh, and and so it is a different field versus artistry because for anybody can pick up a camera mm -hmm. the uh, uh, however you know if you're an artist you have to you have to be an artist, so yeah, it's a different not community. Can draw. Not everybody can draw. <laughs> no one's skilled in that. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> that the, uh, now I forgot the other question you asked. Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> That's okay. I'm always going on tangents, so my apologies. <laughs> no, no, you're cool. <laughs> my question was like, who are these people that are messaging you? Are they oh, yes. groups or is it just the public that are on your public Instagram account? Or Yes. Yeah, who are they? Yeah, it, it, the good news is that, that there is groups. Uh, life art groups on Facebook, different mm -hmm. ones, local ones and international ones, and and uh, I'm an administrator for many of them. The uh, and those groups are very well managed, so there is very little with regards to predatory behaviors within the groups. Uh, however, on social media overall, there is. So on my Facebook account, on my Instagram account, as well as on my TikTok account, the uh, I, I get a lot of approaches. It's gotten better recently i think instagram cleaned up its act a little bit mm -hmm. the uh, uh but still you're getting approaches and and it's what we call uh vanker fantasies Van so vanker. yeah where okay. the the uh, where you know where they're 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 writing to you something as as, as a material so they can jerk off oh i see yeah, yeah. yeah. i yeah. remember you sent me a message mm -hmm. uh, like this is just an example of like one of the many messages i get like per yes. day 
And okay, yeah, I understand. And and as sex workers, we get that a lot too. Right? I, I I bet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I bet, right? And they yeah. they write you things, and it's very obvious when they write to you. Yes. They went, oh, you know, I, I was modeling once and I got an erection and mm-hmm. and uh, do you ever get an erection when you model and blah, 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 blah. I, I get that question a lot. Yeah. The, uh, and and it's, it's guys fantasizing about being a model and being naked in front of people. And, and for them, being naked is sexual, not natural. Yes. And and yes. uh, I think it's something with 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 done in North America, right? Is oh, is sure. is the way we treat the human, the naked human body? We've sexualized it versus making it something natural. I mean, we're born naked. Yeah, we're so, born naked. <laughs> yeah. And so so yeah, I, I get a lot of messages like that, and I usually uh, I respond. I you know. Uh, the uh, I send a message back, say no, it's not like that at all, and then usually they go away. Yeah. And and uh, yeah. I, yeah, I don't know. It's it's, it's a bit frustrating sometimes right. because people don't understand what it actually is, what it means. It's 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 they're trying to put put a label on things, mm-hmm. and and they're trying to approach this because of course, society, it's our fault as well because when you watch porn and whatnot stuff online, that, that that's what we teach them. That's what yes. you know. That's what we show them, and and so they think when somebody is naked, that okay, you know, that's what happens next, and and so. So I think we have, as a society, we have a lot of work to do to really normalize that and, and make people not think of the human body when it's naked as something sexual, but as something natural. Yeah, yeah, that's really interesting. That's um, a really great point that you make, too, because, like, as you mentioned, you grew up in Europe. You're from you're Swiss, so you're from Switzerland, obviously. Europeans versus North Americans, it's very different <laughs> how we treat bodies and how we look at bodies how we treat nakedness did you want to share a little bit about that aspect i think that's really important to talk about yeah I, I'm, growing up in europe and you know back in the day i mean i'm i'm older <laughs> <laughs> the uh the uh, uh you know we had co-ed changing rooms and whatnot at school it was just normal and and uh the, uh, we would uh, my, my family would always go to the south of France to Cap Duct and, and we'd, we'd uh, vacation at the largest nudist community in the world there and, yeah. and it was just normal and, and, and it felt really good it feels normal right as soon yeah, as the bathing natural. suit comes off it feels natural and, mm-hmm. and you get a different relationship to your body the end that way and, and, and I think you underst- one learns to understand that nobody's body is perfect right we, we and, and again we've created this image in our society where women men and, and any gender has to look a certain way everybody has to look the same way and yeah. and the reality is entirely different and 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 growing up in europe has taught me that and, and being a model i'm not perfect far from it and 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 the artists don't want a perfect model they want flaws they want scars they want curves they want that they want to see things that they they, yeah realness that they can draw right so they're looking for real models they're not looking for barbies or kens they're looking for uh different type bodies that they can draw and 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 i think you know it's just it's a different way of growing up and it Mm. builds a different relationship to your body and it, it, it 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 allows you to have a different relationship uh, with the other genders, right? Yeah. The uh, women or anybody for that matter and, and respect them and have friendships. I, um, I've created many friendships at, at Ava Fitness yeah. and, and, and yeah, they're women. And, you know, when, we, when, we, when I post something online uh, where, where I, I'm doing the duet with Gigi and yeah. people, they react to it and, and they're thinking because we're pole dancing together, we must be a couple oh or you know, we must be having sex or yeah. whatever, right? No, we're friends. We're doing a performance together. It's hard work. It's, really it's very hard. enjoyable work Yours together. Really hard. <laughs> the, uh, but it's hard, yeah. and 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 uh, people of different gender, different sexuality, whatnot, can work together. Mm-hmm. It's just it's just a matter of respect, right? Treating each other with respect, and I think that's something that's really important that we have to bring back. That that people, you know, that we appreciate each other. That we don't treat each other the way people treat each other in porn or yeah. whatever right so yeah that's not that's not reality it's not it's not it's reality, not reality. <laughs> <laughs> well going back what you were talking about too in terms of like bodies and like how 
how you grew up and stuff. I think that's really, really fascinating. And I think just like here, like myself being born in Canada, I was born and raised here in Vancouver, and like North Americans, we see bodies as like shame, like nakedness as like shameful and like stigma attached to that. And like that to me is just like so bizarre because as you mentioned, like we're born naked, like we're meant to be like naked beings, like to be free, right? Is that so bizarre? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And I think that society uses shaming very effectively mm-hmm. the, uh, to keep us in check, so to speak, yeah, right? To and and uh, religion oh, plays yeah. a huge part in that. Huge. The, uh, and and uh, I think it's important that we realize that the human body is, is, is a fantastic thing mm-hmm. and and uh, the, our mind is a fantastic thing and and we can accomplish and do a lot and I think we just have to look past of those you know Instagram uh, uh, posts or, or past yeah. what porn shows us or, or what the media shows us what, what the model is supposed to look like or the way we're supposed to behave I think the key is to treat each other with respect oh, yeah. and, and and it's a fantastic experience to create art to be a model and and, and work with artists and create art it's it's a very spiritual experience and and, and I yeah. think it would be nice if more people could experience it right the, uh, but it takes a bit of courage to go into that yeah. I would love to hear about the spiritual uh, spirituality <laughs> I cannot speak today <laughs> flowing over my words but the spirituality of art of life art modeling because you mentioned that's the second time you mentioned it too, and I'm curious to see like where that originates from. What exactly you mean by that? So if you want to elaborate, that'd be great. It's it's yeah, it's, it's kind of hard to describe. But when you're doing a pose, so you're doing a 25 minute pose, you're expressing something, mm-hmm. and and you're being surrounded by artists, maybe 20 artists all around you, and they all perceive your pose and they perceive it. In their own way right they're not cameras they're human beings they use their minds so there is an interpretation mm-hmm. and 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 they look at the model and they try to read the model that they try to read the pose and it creates a spirit in the room and then they create the art and and after the pose i love going around and looking at the different artwork looking at the different interpretation and speaking with the artists and see and and find out you know what they saw what they like and and often I imagine in my head what my pose looks like. And, and then I go and see what the artists see. I, I was doing a, uh, I was modeling a basic inquiry a week ago. And one of the artists, uh, she drew just my hands. Oh. I was doing a 30 minute pose and she drew just my hands. And, and she said, yeah, I was fascinated by your hands. And, and, I, and I had my hands on my, I was sitting on a footstool, had my hands on my thighs mm-hmm. and she drew my hands. And I never realized doing the pose I wasn't focused on my hands yeah. I was focused on expressing the whole pose but she picked up on my hands being in that position that uh, what it formed so yeah. so I think that's really interesting and and it, as you as you model I often uh, what I do I, I meditate because mm. you control your breathing yeah and 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 you you, you, you kind of you calm down and you you kind of dive off into thinking about different things processing as you do it and and it's it's very much like meditation in a way right yeah. and it helps you also when you're sitting there for 25 minutes and all of a sudden your shoulder because you're holding the pose starts to hurt yeah. when you're meditating you can you can uh, deal with that pain right and and uh, it, it creates a, a very spiritual environment in a sense and and it's yeah it's really fantastic i know the artists really feel cool. it as well because they love uh, looking at each other's drawings, they love talking about it. They love yeah. explaining. They love pointing out things, and so it's yeah. a, it's a, it's a fantastic uh, experience. And I, I think overall, you know, particularly having gone, all of us having gone through this pandemic and yes. all everything else we're going through right now, I think being creative, the, uh, and you don't have to be an artist to be creative. You can take a piece of paper and you can draw whatever you draw. It doesn't matter. But being creative. Is is an incredible tool to help with the mental well-being, oh, and yes. everybody talks about mental health and yeah. and drawing, just creating. The and, and I often, I always listen to the instructors when I'm at the schools when I'm modeling. Then I go home and whatever they instructed, whatever session they had that I was modeling for, I go home and I try it myself. Oh, <laughs> right? So I learn something every time. Yeah, and, you have a takeaway. And, and I have a takeaway, and and I'm not a good drawer, but. 
but uh, I enjoy drawing it and I enjoy learning about it and mm. and I get the free lessons that way when yeah, I model. Yeah, free lessons. That's yeah. pretty and, valuable. And it's very, it helps very much with processing and it helps mm. you, your well-being. And I, I think as a, as a society, rather than looking into our phone or into the TV, we have to be more creative again. I think it would do us a lot of good. Yeah, I totally totally think so as well and like that's another reason why i kept going with this podcast because like do i stop it i was i don't know it was like the beginning of the pandemic was the end of season one i this is gonna be close to the end of season three can you believe it that's like, awesome i, like, I love I needed, that you're doing it i just needed something to keep me going yes I, <laughs> you know yes and also with everyone listening to everyone was like don't stop <laughs> i keep going I'm like okay it's lots Lots of people to interview, so yeah. But anyway, sorry, side tangent on that. I think it's fantastic. I yeah. think it's fantastic because these are these are things we don't talk about totally. in in our you know standard media or, or uh, society, and I think this is something that needs to be talked about. The, uh, so that people can understand. We can take away the stigma and we can take yes. away the label just because a stripper does stripping as a, as a professional doesn't make you a different person. You're no. still Steph as a person, yeah. and 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 you deserve to be treated as Steph, right? Yeah. And and so I think it's important. It's an important uh, thing you're doing for sure. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I think a lot of people forget that. They think, um, again, because like we're playing roles just like you are with modeling and same with me as a stripper or a content creator or whatever, but then people can't seem to separate the two. And I think the same thing comes with specifically like life art modeling because they cannot separate that, okay, this is just me being naked and it's not being uh, eroticized and I think people can't separate being naked is not always going to equate a sensual thing yeah exactly yeah. And, and and I think it's important too to separate because we we sensuality and sexuality isn't the same thing no and no. and uh, the uh, there's a huge spectrum in between as well and and as a model, if you're if you're working, you're working, and and you have a great experience, but it's not sexual. People always ask me, "Did you have you ever had a, an erection modeling?" Yeah. And I'm like, "No," and I've done it for many years, and the answer is no. Yeah. And they're like, "Really? Yes, really." really? They're so surprised, like, <laughs> they're no so surprised and, and and because it's not about that, right? It's, not it's about just that. not about that, and yeah. and. Uh, I think it's important that we convey that message. It's the same with stripping, right? The, uh, oh, absolutely. The, uh, it's exactly the same. Like people ask you, oh, I'm sure they ask you, you want to go out after oh, and whatnot, right? <laughs> Massive eye roll <laughs> that no one can see right now, but yes. <laughs> you get that question a lot. Like, oh, like, uh, are you available after? Or like, uh, or do you offer anything else? And like, there are people that offer extras, but unfortunately I'm not one of those people. And People just can't separate the two, which is, I don't know why that is so complicated, but mm -hmm. somehow it is. <laughs> yes, very much so. But I, I know um, when we had our initial conversation like a month ago, I think whenever we last chatted, you wanted to talk about like this, like celebration versus um, demonization in terms of like, in terms of bodies. Because, as you mentioned, there's so many different kinds of bodies, you know, we need these type of bodies, especially um, for the purpose of life art modeling, in terms of, like, we need to see, like, how real bodies move and, like, different twists and turns and everything like that. And going back to an earlier point, too, on what you said, like, that ideal body type, there, there is no ideal body type, yes. right? That's correct. Yeah, was it something you wanted to add on that point too? Because I know we were chatting about that. Yes, yeah, many times ago. <laughs> and that's what we are seeing. Because I got a lot of I got a lot of emails or, and messages from people, and and uh, often it's from people that legitimately legitimately would like to try it out. Mm -hmm. And and uh, often what it is, it's it's the majority of them are good looking young women, and I, and yes. uh, and the reason it is is that the uh, um, only the ones that think that they meet society's body image think they're good enough for modeling mm -hmm. the reality is entirely different often i uh, uh, i was modeling toronto a month ago with artist 25 and i walked in and the artist looked at me and says you the model i said yes 
He says, oh, thank God, not another young uh, woman. <laughs> young, <laughs> not another young, beautiful woman. Because the majority of them are young, beautiful women. And, right. and while they enjoy drawing them, it's the same thing. Same thing they yeah. would like something different. They would right. like older people that like uh, uh, larger bodies. They like taller bodies, shorter bodies. They like scars. They like, they like different things. The artists, for the, the artists are not tied to the body image that society has created. And, and I think it's really unfortunate that, mm. that we've created, uh, uh, we created a, a perception that only uh, people that meet that body image are good enough to do life art modeling. Right. The Not total true. opposite is true, right? right. And, and they really, they would like to have more men. Uh, they would like to have uh, men of, uh, and women of all ages, of all sizes, of, of all uh, ethnic backgrounds, uh, uh, anything. And, and, and the variety is really what helps the artist uh, learning to draw the body, the human body, and yeah, so 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 if anybody's out there that wants to be a, a try to be, become a life art model, you don't have to have a perfect body at all. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, it helps if you're different. Yeah, and, definitely. And so I encourage you to go to go and try. For sure, and we're well, we're gonna end the episode in just a little bit in terms of like how do you get started, what what you would recommend, and your tips and tricks and stuff like that. Um, I do want to kind of go into the predatory area because I feel like we need to talk about that in terms of like, like scams, stalkers, <laughs> yes. harassment, um, precautions you can take. Where yes. do you want to start? <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, like in every field where there's the naked human body involved, there is a predatory element. Yeah. And, and when you're online, um, uh, you know, it's not just local people, it's people from all over the world. Yeah. And in some area, you know, it's, it's even worse than it is here with regards to the perception of the naked human body. Mm -hmm. And they approach you with messages and whatnot. And it goes all the way from, uh, you know, the dick pic to, to outright harassment to, to stalking. Yeah. I mean, I've had stalkers. The, yeah. uh, and and I had to take uh, action on it right right down to legal action. Oh the, my gosh. Uh, and and I think some of the things I would suggest is that uh, as a life art model, uh, not to use your real name, mm -hmm. use a stage name. Yes. Uh, to have a separate uh, social media account that's not tied to your, your to, to your personal account. Uh, type of thing so in order to protect yourself from from stalkers because unfortunately that does happen it happens to yeah. men and women totally. the, uh, and 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 it's not a pleasure uh, uh, a pleasurable experience at all yeah, yeah it's, uh, did you want to share any details about the stalking incident i mean like spark notes version i know like there's legal stuff we don't want to go right into yeah. and i don't want to trigger anything either the uh in my case the uh had a couple of stalkers one was actually a local the uh, uh, a local guy uh, is well known. He is actually a life art model, oh, the, uh, wow. but he the uh, he is known to be um, uh, predatory. Uh, predatory. The uh, and and uh, the uh, yeah. I had to I had to in you know, I had to hire a lawyer and and uh, put an end to it. That, yeah. The uh, and and uh, but it really helped that I did not put use my real name. I did not the. Uh, uh, have anything in there with regards to my uh, personal life so I have, a, I have an account where I just put the life art stuff yeah. and so so I was able to keep it contained but nevertheless yeah. it was not a pleasurable experience no. and no. and the second time was somebody from completely uh, outside online and yeah and, uh, it's still scary though it's, very it's not it's not it's not a good experience yeah no I know you and I had a conversation in the summer too when I was getting death threats on my YouTube channel, which has nothing to do with sex work. It's like a completely G-rated wow. channel for my CS Works channel. If you guys haven't subscribed already, please do. Um, <laughs> <laughs> she was plugging my own podcast, whatever. Um, but yeah, like it's scary, and, and you gave me some really, really sound and great advice. I also started a police uh, file as well, a case file. And luckily, it stopped. I mean, knock on wood. I have not received anything okay. further than that. But it was scary. Yeah, like, it was. Oh, uh, sure. And like I was deflecting a lot, but it was also just like, oh, because they were like, oh, I know where you live, and they were. I don't. I don't know if it's actually like real or anything, but they started posting um, people that they assumed might have been me or maybe my family with the same last name, posting their addresses on my YouTube channel, which got flagged. And I don't know if they actually know where I live. Like, I don't know if they're bluffing. Like, sometimes they are, but maybe they're not. And 
I leave for work like sometimes pretty early in the morning or I come home really late at night and I'm just like constantly having to look over my shoulder and I don't want to have that feeling of mm-hmm. feeling like I'm being endangered or mm-hmm. being threatened and it's scary like even online it's almost even scary I don't know if it's scarier online than locally it's it's not a good experience either way yeah, the, um, it's not fun. and because you don't know as you say right you don't know yeah. the, these threats you know are they empty threats or indeed does that person know where you live Mm -hmm. and unfortunately there is a lot of people out there that are mentally not right and and uh yeah (laughs) so i think there's there's things one can do the uh to protect themselves and using a stage name and using different accounts is is one of them keep your personal life separate uh, separate from it the uh and and i think that's that's one good step to take absolutely and this is this is great advice for any content creators out there too um if you're a local model as well if you do glamour modeling or anything like that or even more erotic modeling i know a lot of us do participate in photo shoots like that for promo and stuff like that so these are really really great advice and tips that we can also utilize in our work as sex workers too so thank you so much for pointing on that i don't want to end on a scary note there (laughs) (laughs) but we also need to talk about um like what's the pay like if you are open to sharing Mm -hmm. in terms of like pay for models what does that look like and like what do you get out of being a life model yeah the the pay is not very good (laughs) (laughs) it it typically the rate is is uh, 30 dollars an hour Mm -hmm. yeah and i mean you you really can't live from it because because you can only model so many hours a day before your body breaks down. Totally. The, uh, um, so I would say it's a, it's a good uh, second job hobby to have. Yeah. I don't do it for the money. I do it because I enjoy it. Yeah, I the, uh, And it, it creates some pocket money, which is great. Mm-hmm. Um, but the going rate is about uh, $30 an hour, mm-hmm. typically. Gotcha, gotcha. And I know we have to wrap up soon because you're going back to the studio, but... Lastly, I really want to talk about like how do you get into life art modeling? I know you mentioned a couple of things earlier, but like if you want to elaborate and go a little bit more in depth, um, maybe what studios or communities? Are there any groups? Do you need a resume? What do people look for? What do artists and studios look for? Yes, the the, the way to get started, um, there's. The, the easiest way to get started is you need to have a few drawings of you as a model, right? That's usually oh, what they ask for. Like a portfolio. Like a portfolio. Yeah. And, and uh, of course, you only can get a portfolio if you're modeling. So it's a bit of a catch-22. Totally. And you totally need a, need a resume. And, and we recognize that. Uh, Anne and I were talking about that this fall uh, because we're so busy as models and we can only do so many sessions. There's a shortage of models, actually. Oh. And so what we talked about is creating a seminar and we've been working on that yeah. and uh, we're going to hold that training seminar in, in early February, very likely. Great. And uh, we will have a group of artists there. So that will give uh, people that attend the seminar the opportunity to be drawn as well. Wow. Take pictures of that, of those drawings and then be able to use that on their portfolio. Huge. And that way they're then able to go online and go to UBC, Emily, R, Emily Carr, Langara, uh, Kaplan University. City, Van Arts, VCAD, etc., 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 and apply lots online. Of yeah. Lots of local schools, mm-hmm. lots of local studios, uh, really a shortage of, of creative models, both male and female. Yeah. And, and they're not looking for another 20 year old that looks perfect. They're looking for different types, different backgrounds, different ages, different body shapes, different. Right whatnot so so uh, you know if you think that oh i'm not an instagram model perfect you don't need to be yeah. and and uh, uh we're going to post the information on uh, i'll post it on my instagram it's awesome. it's marcel c uh 997 yes it's m-a-r-c-e-l-c as in caesar uh, 997 and anybody out there who wishes to uh become a life art model i can send you a guideline as well yeah the, your uh, guideline is very very in depth. It's like this beautiful, um, beautiful word document. I know I said beautiful. <laughs> Beautifully written is what I meant. Beautifully written, well thought out document that really goes into detail about like how to get started, um, practice your poses, what you can do to prepare as a model and stuff too. That like I'm sure if if I if my listeners want to connect with you, I'm sure 
you probably don't mind sending that over no I, I don't i don't mind at all uh, if you do need more models and and if somebody looks look you know is looking to do that as a side job that'd be absolutely perfect yeah and i'm happy to send them the information and, and we're happy to um invite them to attend the seminar that we're going to be holding we'll Doing the first one in February, perhaps we'll do another one in the summer, right? See how it yeah, goes. See how it goes. And, and people have an opportunity to learn. They have an opportunity to learn different poses, to model, and they have an opportunity to be drawn as well because that's how you that's get started. How you get started, yeah. right? Is this kind of similar? Because um, I know we have listeners from all over, lots in Canada, the US, but also in Europe too. Is this similar in terms of like how you would get started there? Because I know you have experience in all those places as well. Yeah, very similar actually. Similar. The uh, okay. and and uh, you know if they have an opportunity, often I find people like oh well I just go model for free and to get mm-hmm. drawn, but please don't do that. Is if you model for free, you're taking away uh, a job from a model that depends on it. Yeah. But what you can do is is often students at the art universities or the animation schools. They have to do homework, and they may be looking to hire a model, the uh, and and uh, you know come to their house and model there, and and uh, the uh, there may be an opportunity to model for a student and and do a what we call a trade for drawing, right? Like yeah, trade like for TFP, TFP yeah. and and there may be an opportunity there. However, um, you know, I, I caution anybody from going to somebody's uh, house, house yeah. the, uh, especially not alone. If you're if you're uh, contemplating or doing that, meeting up with an artist or a student, always make sure to bring a chaperone, yes. the uh, uh, so that you're safe. Because uh, from the outset, you don't know somebody that yes, seems right. really nice may not be nice at all. Right. Yeah. So, so safety is number one. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. Gosh, this is such a great episode. I'm so glad <laughs> that you're able to come on the show and also like come in person, like and I can see your face. Like, <laughs> So wonderful again um before i let you go because i know you got pole class pretty soon and we're right on the dot here but where can we find you again i know you plugged your instagram maybe just say it one more time and if there's any website or anything else that you want to promote please do uh yeah i don't have a website uh i do have uh, facebook it's marcel canuck mm-hmm. on facebook they can find me the uh and on instagram it's marcel c as in caesar um 997 and yeah if anybody wishes to get more information about life art modeling uh, fe- se- feel free to send me a message don't send me a dick pic please yeah but if i get a nice message i will always respond and and i'll be happy to uh to help out if, if somebody wishes to get started it's being a life art model is a wonderful experience it sounds great and thank you so much for sharing your experience i know there's a lot of actually like a lot of sex workers that do life art modeling that i know of and like different studios and stuff that offer it too so something you might want to get into and maybe something you're curious and please 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 reach out to marcel and as for me that's everything for this episode don't forget it's new episodes every single sunday don't forget to like rate share review and subscribe maybe rate me five stars on apple share do all the things <laughs> And we'll catch everyone in for another new episode next week. Thanks, Marcel. Thanks for having me. You're listening to Strip by Sia, hosted, produced, and edited by Steph Sia, artwork by Maria Bellanzarama, music by Ted D, and photography by Ian Dabern.